and Community Affairs for their excellent efforts to organize this special event and to thank the Center for Computing and Data Sciences for graciously hosting it. It's been said that teaching is the art of assisting discovery. As a research university, this is, a very, this is at the very heart of what we do. From the time way back when, when Alexander Graham Bell was toiling away at his revolutionary idea just down the road at Boston University, we've always been a laboratory for innovation. We've been a workshop for preparing students in meaningful ways for the world that, aw that awaits them. For us, it has never been enough to merely provide our students with new information and new knowledge. So much of what defines our mission comes through preparing our students from all backgrounds to provide exceptional value for society. For all of us, the last few years has reinforced once again the notion that solving society's grand challenges will depend on innovation from people with STEM backgrounds. We've all lived in the last few years and seen that the heroes of emerging out of the pandemic were the scientists and engineers, the people who in record time figured out the virus's structure, invented, manufactured, and distributed inexpensive COVID tests, developed robotic-driven large-scale PCR testing, and a new vaccine technology that was manufactured and delivered at a scale unheard of in the history of the human race. And what would have happened to society, the economy, and education without Zoom? Scientists and engineers led us through the pandemic. Looking forward, the dual task of sustaining our world's energy needs for the growing economy, while preventing and mitigating catastrophic climate change, may be the greatest existential challenge we've ever faced. Our success will be possible through the innovative, ambitious, and creative people that go into STEM fields. That said, of course, we know that solving these challenges will require that we prepare STEM students not only in science and technology, but with other critical attributes and lifelong skills for learning and a passion to have an impact. To provide innovative impacts on all of society, STEM students will also need to learn how to constructively engage non-STEM educated professionals, such as those in government, business, and community leaders. They will need to appreciate the needs for inclusive innovation so that solutions are found for all of society, not just a subset. In short, we need to create societal citizens that internalize the concept that great minds do not think alike. For decades, Boston University has been proud to travel to school districts and to welcome thousands of K-12 students from across New England to our campuses to see firsthand, and even more importantly, to get their hands dirty and take part in actual research taking place in the sciences and technology, engineering, and mathematical fields. We have a number of exciting programs here today. Our Technology Inspiration Scholars Program engages thousands of elementary, middle, and high school students across the country by sending our undergraduate engineering students out to their school districts and guiding exciting hands-on engineering and design activities to educate and excite K-12 students to pursue STEM careers. Our Campus Climate Lab, where student faculty teams each year submit proposals for research projects designed to make our campus and our operations more sustainable, many of which you've already, we've already put into action. Our Research in Science and Engineering Program, or RISE, which brings high school students to our campuses over the summer to conduct university laboratory research in some of the world's finest scientific uh, laboratories and with the world's best scientific minds. Our Upward Bound Math and Science and our Boston Area Health Education Center and Summer Enrichment Programs, which provide young people in Boston of all backgrounds with pathways to careers in health, public health, health, public health math, and science. Complementing all these programs, of course, are many extraordinary spaces and maker spaces, including this building, the 15,000 square foot engineering product innovation center down the street, the 5,000 square foot biomedical engineering technology and entrepreneurship center, and coming next spring will be our robotics and autonomous systems teaching and innovation center funded with a grant from Mass High Tech, all of these being run in deep partnership with industry. Many of our students engage these programs and our faculty to make their mark on Boston University, but more importantly, to make their mark on society. They work on cool things, like the recently approved by the FDA bionic pancreas for people with type 1 diabetic, diabetes, a device you put on, 
You put in your weight and your age, and then you live your life like you're not a diabetic. No other input, no calorie counting from the patient. A miniature beating artificial heart chamber, which is providing a sandbox for testing new heart treatments in a personalized way. An out-of-this-world-looking MRI helmet that is revolutionizing the way to do medical imaging and brain scans at a much lower cost. New, highly sophisticated robots being designed to help seniors and those with disabilities lead more accessible life, or even soft robots to advance minimally invasive surgery, and new sources of clean, renewable energy for vehicles, buildings, and supercomputers. And of course, as I mentioned, in this remarkable building, there are faculty and students working on transformative methods in machine learning and artificial intelligence to transform not just technology and computing, but business, science, law, public health, the humanities, social sciences, education, and more fields. In just a moment, I'll have a pleasure to welcome, of welcoming Lieutenant Governor Triscoll to the podium. But first, I want to again thank you for joining us as we kick off Massachusetts STEM Week. We're honored to be hosting this program and excited by the talent, investment, and inquisitiveness of the people in this room. At the close of the speaking program, I ask that everyone take an opportunity to check out our STEM exhibits and to see the remarkable work being done by our students. For anyone interested, meanwhile, in touring the building, I invite you to gather by the stage at 945. And now I'm delighted to introduce Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, Kim Driscoll. Lieutenant Governor Driscoll was elected alongside Governor Mara Healy this past year and sworn in as the Massachusetts 73rd Lieutenant Governor in January of 2023. Prior to this, she served as the mayor of Salem, Mass, and from, 2000, from 2006 to 2022, where she garnered statewide attention for major green energy and sustainability investments, technology, modernization, pension and health care uh, reform, insur health insurance reform, and the revitalization of the Salem downtown. Today, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll serves as the co-chair of the Massachusetts STEM Advisory Council, where she leads efforts to reduce barriers to STEM careers for women and historically underrepresented groups. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, Kim Dressler. Thank you, Provost Luchin. Uh, how lucky are we? Look at this amazing view. Thank you so much for hosting us on a beautiful morning in a building that does so much to connect the dots between what happens in these spaces, young adults in our communities, and the opportunities to go forth and ensure that STEM pathways are accessible to as many students as possible. And our entire STEM Advisory Council, I want to say thank you for being here uh, and for contributing. Uh, we've got many members who are here, our co-chairs on the STEM Council who couldn't join us this morning, but Congressman Jake Auchincloss and Dr. Jeff Leiden appreciate their support for STEM Week and their continued dedication to STEM education and workforce development. And as was mentioned, we're so grateful to be joined by uh, Secretary of Education Pat Tutwiler, Secretary of Labor and Workforce Lauren Jones, We've got Dr. Robbie Goldstein from the Department of Public Health and Undersecretary Kiami Miyahani, who's with us as well, um, Deputy Climate Chief Jonathan Scragg, who's also here, and Rep. Tommy Vitola, who I forgot was a, a BU alum. Go Terriers, right? <laughs> Um, I think this signifies our administration's importance around uh, STEM. We've got workforce, education, health care, and human services. We see that connection deeply and feel really grateful to think about the work ahead, not in silos, but really as a connected scaffolding that we can use to, to help educate and help grow uh, a STEM workforce. And here in Massachusetts, we know our future depends on our youth and our youth's ability to be prepared as we empower them. Uh, and that's why I'm thrilled to have so many students here. Can I ask any of our middle school or high school students just to stand up so we can celebrate the work that you're doing? Please. Thank you guys so much for being here, for sharing with us um, some of the work that's underway. And we really want to make sure you have the tools and resources you need to see yourself in STEM and to be here and to be in buildings like this, taking on this important work. In the Commonwealth, we know that STEM skills are critical for preparing our students for future success. Employers across all sectors and in every region of the state require well-prepared workforce with strong skills in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We also want to make sure people are passionate about what they do. Uh, yes, it's important for our workforce, for sure, but we also want you to know this is mission-oriented work. Think about it. 
curing diseases, building life-saving machines, safeguarding the planet, finding ways to better connect people and machines, lots of ways that you can give back. And that's why Governor Healy and I are so proud to be championing STEM education and STEM workforce preparedness with a whole of government approach, including our Secretary of Education, Secretary of Labor and Workforce, in partnership with our STEM Advisory Council. We're here today with all of you to celebrate the 2023 kickoff to Mass STEM Week, which has always been about encouraging students to see themselves in STEM. We're continuing to push that this year, but we're also taking it one step further. This year's STEM Week theme is your STEM future is our STEM future. We depend on our current math, science, technology, and engineering students of today to be the industry leaders of tomorrow. In the context of a global climate crisis, we know that Massachusetts depends on future STEM leaders and innovators to deliver the progress and sustainable solutions as we fight for a cleaner planet. We're gathered here for our STEM Week kickoff in BU's beautiful and iconic Center for Computing and Data Science building. And that's no coincidence. It's the largest building in Boston that is 100% free of fossil fuels. 100%. It remains the most environmentally sustainable, energy efficient structure BU has ever built in one of the greenest buildings in all of New England. This building represents the intersection between education, clean climate, and our STEM future and it's a glowing example of all the incredible STEM work already underway in the Commonwealth. Governor Healy and I want to build on this progress to inspire the next generation of STEM experts and open high quality STEM pathway options for even more students. This year's budget, the first from our administration, delivered significant investments in programs that will drive STEM student success. We delivered more than $45 million for early college and innovation pathways. So you can get interested and find a pathway in this field earlier. That's our effort to expand opportunities for high school students across the Commonwealth to explore college and career pathways before graduating high school. We're also boosting workforce training, apprenticeship programs, STEM education, professional development, and more. And for our students wondering how STEM and clean climate is connected to the different careers for futures you may imagine for yourselves, We've got you covered. That's really what this week is supposed to be, a fun celebration of the STEM opportunities at your fingertips. This week, we'll be engaging with employers, school and industry partners from every corner of STEM to highlight the variety of opportunities that are available in STEM education, STEM fields, and STEM careers. We have Lego Education, Google, New Balance, Museum of Science, Vertex, the New England Patriots, the Northeast Clean Energy Council, GMGI, Mass Maritime, and more participating in, as STEM ambassadors this year, many of whom are with us today who have partnered with us to share the importance of STEM and how all sorts of students could have a meaningful future in a STEM career. We also have an incredible calendar of events where we'll be engaging students at all events and all ages, from Suffolk Construction, the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, we lean into the basketball theme a little bit in this administration. South Shore Vocational Technical High School, Revere City Labs High School, and many of our community colleges from Middlesex to Holyoke. We're engaging every region of the Commonwealth and really want to reach every student that we can. In a few moments, you'll hear from some of our students directly. They're the reason we're here today. By uplifting and championing the STEM excellence already underway, we can highlight opportunities for students and their families and shepherd in the next generation of Massachusetts STEM leaders. I often say to our employers and our businesses, if you want to see our future workforce, come visit a classroom. And that means this work is about all of you who are here, our young adults. Learning, believing, seeing yourself in STEM. We're proud of you, what you do every day, the strength you bring to this work, and the educators who work to ensure they're getting better every day, learning about these new advances, putting us in a position to make sure Massachusetts continues to be at the forefront of STEM education. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our Secretary of Education, no stranger to schools himself, uh, Pat Tutwiler, doing a great job helping ensure that our next generation has all that they can to be successful here in our Commonwealth. Wow, good morning. good morning. All right. 
Love it when folks engage in that sort of call and response. Good morning, good morning. Gives me energy. Uh, it is uh, wonderful to be here in community with all of you. Thank you for the warm introduction, Lieutenant Governor. I've had this week circled on my calendar for a long, long time, and I'm so glad it's here, and I'm loving the way that it's kicking off. Uh, you see the theme right above my head right here. Uh, for me, your STEM future is our STEM future, encapsulates so well the notion that our current students are the next generation of scientists, engineers, and inventors whose future innovations, insights, and discoveries will serve to tackle the challenges we face as a society and to illuminate the possibilities we don't yet know exist. And the tenets of, uh, of what we in the Healy Driscoll administration have been referring to, uh, reimagining high school, relates directly to the future growth of our science, technology, engineering, clean energy, and mathematics workforce, which all centers around attracting students and creating a pathway for them to continue toward these high demand sectors and to having incredible, an incredible impact on the world around them. High school is the launching space for students into their adult lives, and we've yet to realize the full potential of that educational experience. We must engage students fully in the present in order to best prepare them to engage with the future. With equity at the core, we must aim to see and honor the diverse needs, interests, perspectives, and life experiences of all students. Inspiring the next generation of STEM leaders starts in the classroom. In Massachusetts, we have a wealth of pathway programs from innovation career pathways to STEM tech academies to career tech education. All of these open doors for our students and illuminate that their dreams could be in the area of STEM. Each serves as the perfect foundation for expanding opportunities into more high schools and increasing access for all students in the Commonwealth. And as we seek to expand access, we must do so equitably. Because the truth is, African Americans, those in the Latinx community, and women continue to be underrepresented and underemployed in STEM careers. And that also starts in the classroom. Not enough focus is put on inclusivity, representation, and considering the, the students in the margin not as an afterthought, but as part of our primary goal. When we talk about increasing equitable access to applied hands-on learning and increasing the connection between what is learned in the classroom and what's applicable in a career, we're talking about exactly what's necessary to inspire interest in the STEM industries and to ensure that students are equipped with the knowledge and skills to succeed in their chosen fields. It starts with students seeing this as an option for them and ends with them realizing it as part of their dream. With every classroom conversation uh, I have with high school students across the Commonwealth, including with my own high schooler at home, I'm even more confident about the direction of our state and the future of our planet. By empowering each and every one of our students to explore every option available to them and allowing them to see it as a viable, exciting pathway to their future, we will inspire the next generation of STEM innovators and future leaders in our fight to preserve the climate. I will leave, I'm so happy that there's so many students here, by the way. Had a great opportunity to connect with some students from Boston English High, where my career began as a student teacher long, long, long time ago. Uh, students from Weston uh, as well, and I know there are others here. But uh, I, I'm gonna leave the students with one request before I get out of the way and allow for the most important voices to be heard. Uh, take the rest of this week to be curious. Explore different STEM fields. Ask adults in your life about what science, math, engineering, or technological interest, area, idea interests them. And then ask what careers would align. Join us this week by figuring out your own STEM future. Because as we've said, our STEM future, your STEM future, is our 
STEM future. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure uh, to invite Mohammed to the stage to provide a, a little bit about his journey. I had the great pleasure of learning that he graduated from New Mission High School, went on to communi community college, and now is a junior right here at BU. Really interested to hear, uh, and looking forward to hearing more from him. So I'll invite Mohammed to come to the stage. Thank you all so much, and enjoy the rest of this day. Ladies and gentlemen, um, esteemed guests, Secretary Sutweiler and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, our B BU Provost and former Dean of Engineering. Uh, my name is Mohammed, and I'm here today to share my journey in STEM education, which has been shaped by my experiences at Bunker Hill Community College and the incredible, and the incredible opportunities available to transfer students at Boston University. As I began my community college journey, I was seeking answers, a path, a way to serve my community. Bunker Hill Community College provided me with the foundation I needed. Yet it was not until I set my sights on Boston University that I realized the immense potential that lay ahead. In the early days of my college journey, I grappled with self-doubt, and a C-plus in college algebra seemed to reinforce my insecurities. However, it was this challenge that became the fuel for my growth. I knew I had to get better at math to pursue my dreams, and I was determined to just do that. Coming from an underserved high school, I felt that I was missing some essential skills needed for college success. Additionally, as an aspiring engineer with limited role models, I knew I needed to pave my own way. Math was the first hurdle on my path, and it was a frightening one. The journey to continue math was not merely about equations and formulas. It was about learning how to learn, developing the habits essential for success, and summoning the courage to advocate for myself. I enrolled in pre-calculus, giving it my undivided attention. I engaged with my professors. I revisited foundational concepts and fortified my algebra skills. I made the most, and I made the most of my office hours. The outcome of this was an A, and it, was, and it marked just the beginning of my journey. <clears throat> With my newfound confidence in math, I expanded my horizons. I excelled in my engineering courses, sought out research opportunities and internships, and made a commitment to support underserved communities like myself in STEM, underserved students in STEM. My summer after freshman year, I had the privilege to participate in Northeastern University's RU Power Program, working on the cutting edge of machine learning and optimization in the realm of solar energy and battery storage systems. Last summer, I completed my first software engineering internship at Athena Health, where I focused on creating machine learning models for, for healthcare applications. I'm currently a research assistant at Boston University's medical school, where I work on machine learning and web development on diseases and cancers. But it's not, about my, it's not only about my academic journey. I am driven to use my free time to mentor and advocate for underserved students in STEM. My roles at Digital Ready, the HOPE Initiative, the Curriculum Committee of Bunker Hill Community College, and the City of Boston's Office of Black Male Advancement have, been, have allowed me to give back to the community and support students facing similar challenges. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, your initiatives for community colleges are going to be instrumental in making stories like mine possible. By supporting and investing in community colleges, we have created opportunities for countless students to pursue their STEM, STEM dreams. Massachusetts' vision and dedication to education are evident in transformative possibilities made accessible to underserved communities. Now, as I stand here today, it's not just about reflecting on the past, but also looking forward to the future. My journey has brought me to Boston University, and it's here that I have found a wealth of resources and support for all students. BU, with its rich history and commitment to academic excellence, offers an array of programs, faculty, and research opportunities that I'm excited to be a part of. For the future, I aspire to continue my work in STEM, leveraging my newfound skills and knowledge to make a real impact. I hope to contribute to the ongoing advancements in technology and science 
and to inspire future generations to follow their dreams, regardless of their backgrounds. In conclusion, my journey is a testament to the potential of community colleges, the transformative power of education, and the profound impact of dedicated leadership. With unwavering determination, the support of our state's education system, and the boundless opportunities presented by institutions like Boston University, we can empower individuals from all backgrounds to reach their full potential in STEM fields. Thank you to the state of Massachusetts and all of our government officials, Bunker Hill Community College, and Boston University for your unwavering commitment to education and for making STEM dreams come true for students like me. Together, we're building a stronger, more inclusive, STEM, more inclusive STEM community in Massachusetts, and the future is filled with limitless possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce our student speaker, Brad. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> My name is Brad Luciano. I am a proud Dominican who goes to Boston International and Boston Public School. In middle school, I participated in Sociedad Latina STEAM team program. Throughout this program, I met Boston University professors, did fun network science, and my cap career activities. I, I really liked all the network science activities, but my favorite, one, my favorite was when I used food coloring and milk. Even though I failed at the first, first try, my friend was able to help me, and we worked together as a team, and we tried again. We were able to see how the molecules visually, visually looked when the food coloring and milk connected together in its own network. My CAP career activities, we did help, it, it did it help us, uh, us explore how our STEAM skills connected with careers. My favorite activity was when we learned more about cybersecurity and we went to Social Latina's new building to create our own video talking about cybersecurity and why is it important. One thing I do remember is the process of skills I learned. I was very shy and nervous to record myself in front of people to present on cybersecurity. But then Sociedad Latina teachers made me feel comfortable and I felt more confident to speak in front of people. And out of topic from this, I actually, last year in ninth grade, I, I was emceeing a book that we did in school where everybody wrote a part of the life in the book and we published it. Okay, back to the script. <laughs> <laughs> I am really grateful for experience, experiences because it's actually helped, actually helped me last year. Yeah, that's what I said, basically. <laughs> and yeah, it was no longer like, I was no longer no longer, no, I wasn't nervous anymore to, you know, talk to people and doing public speaking because of Social Latina, and they really helped me with my public, my public speaking. And I wasn't, I wasn't, if it was, if it wasn't for the program and the activities, I wouldn't be here today. And I'm so thankful for speaking here in front of all of you. Thank you. First, a great hand for our students. They were spectacular. Once again, I want to thank everybody. Uh, and today, enjoy what we have in the back. Students, all the students here, as was said in the past, get inspired, go out, change the world, make it a better place, improve everybody else's lives. Everyone, thank you again for your attendance here and enjoy the uh, presentations in the back and the rest of the day and the rest of the week.